Hello there, welcome to the program. I'm Jane Mutoni. The Imbuto Foundation celebrates its 20th anniversary with a ceremony that was attended by its founder, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame. The Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Ngamije, is calling on residents to get vaccinated due to the new coronavirus variant named Omicron. Welcome to the news in details. Now, on Saturday evening, the Imbuto Foundation celebrates its 20th anniversary with a ceremony that was attended by its founder, the First Lady of Rwanda, Her Excellency Jeanette Kagame, among other dignitaries. Those to speak at the ceremony commended the achievements of the foundation and its beneficiaries. The ceremony was held at the Kigali Convention Center and saw members, stakeholders and friends of the Imbuto Foundation come together to celebrate the Foundation's 20th anniversary and everything that has been achieved. The Foundation has over the years focused on helping Rwanda's education and health sectors to develop as well as youth empowerment. And during her address to those gathered, its founder explained what has driven it forward over the years. The mission that drove Imbuto from the very beginning and birth Pakfa 20 years ago was not glory, it was responsibility. Half a decade after the genocide, the soil of the rich land all Rwandas could finally claim was ripe for fertilizing. The first seed to be planted needed to show precedence. It had to, be, to become a robust, deeply rooted tree that would bear fruits so long as the people needed to eat from it. Also present at the anniversary gala as its guest of honor was the First Lady of Namibia, and she emphasized the need for people to see past their differences and instead work together for the sake of development. We must find identities that are forgiving, that are based on love, that rejects divisiveness, it rejects tribalism, it rejects hatred, and it only fosters on love. We can disagree, we can dislike each other, but at the end of the day we have one thing to do and that is to build. It's not to break. It is easier to break than it is to build. Founded back in 2001 as the Protection and Care of Families Against HIV AIDS or PACFA and becoming the Imputo Foundation six years later, the organization has helped thousands of young men and women to improve their lives and those of their communities. As the entire world is more concerned about the new coronavirus variant named Omicron, the Rwanda's Minister of Health, Dr. Daniel Ngamije, has called on residents to get vaccinated for it is one of the main measures in place to fight the COVID-19 severity. Shislaine Mkwane is that reports. In Kigali City, residents are busy in their works and activities as the country is still putting in place measures to fight COVID-19. Some residents have put masks properly, others have not, meaning that there has been negligence in complying with measures to fight COVID-19 due to the fact that some of them got vaccinated. However, they have information about the new Omicron variant. There is a statement from the Minister of Health that says that the new variant has been detected in Botswana, South Africa and China. It means that we should take seriously the measures to fight COVID-19 spread. We thought that it was easy due to the numbers from the Ministry of Health. It has changed now because if there is a new variant now, it might enter the country and negatively affect it. In almost one year, the world has been fighting Delta variant. The death and infection rates have been rising, and in Rwanda, 1,341 deaths have been recorded in the last seven days. Two death cases were recorded, with 115 new cases, which is 0.1% of the infection rate. Even though almost all activities resumed, residents have said that the measures to fight COVID-19 spread should be taken more serious. <laughs> We are concerned. People neglected the measures. Some do not put on their face masks properly. Others do not wear them at all. There are those that do not wash their hands. Vehicles and buses are 100% fully occupied. 
you understand that is where infections come from. They should close the borders and people from abroad should be quarantined for three days in order to avoid the spread of COVID-19. The Ministry of Health has already released an official statement to reinstate the obligatory 24 hours quarantine in designated hotels for all persons arriving in Rwanda at their own expenses, and this will be effective Sunday 28, November 2021 at noon. The Ministry of Health has urged all residents to get vaccinated as a way to fight COVID-19. The measures are needed to be put in place effectively because it's the only way we can protect ourselves from getting infected and infect others, especially in this festive season we are approaching. You remember that the Delta variant came in the end of last year. We should keep in mind all the measures in place, including vaccination, because the same virus produces others. The vaccines were done basing on the viruses, including the Delta variant. More of the vaccines we have are more powerful than Delta. If there is something that has changed, we shall start with the available vaccines to fight those viruses. The vaccinated people are lucky to live longer or not getting seriously sick more than the unvaccinated ones. People should understand this well. They should not think that because of the new variant detection, the vaccine is now useless. Currently, more than 5.9 million residents have got their first dose of the vaccine. While more than 3.1 million are fully vaccinated, the goal is to vaccinate at least 40% of the residents before this year ends. Ghislaine Mugwaneza, RTV News. Thank you, Ghislaine, for that report. Now, residents of the former Yehembe refugee camp in Gichumbi district are happy with the resumption of conservation efforts. Take a look. <laughs> A special community work held this Saturday to plant erosion-resistant trees, cut terraces, pick up bags and other debris, and remove the stones that had built refugee homes. Residents say that after the refugees left, the area had been ruined. We were very worried that there were areas in the ruins that thieves could use as a hiding place, including holes and pit latrines, which were used by refugees, as these could become dangerous zones for adults and children as well. But because of this sanitation, we thank the government for coming to join us in this community work, which has turned this place back to normal. This community work was organized by the ministry in charge of emergency management, United Nations High Commission for Refugees, and the community of Detroit. The permanent secretary of the Ministry in Charge of Emergency Management, Kayumba Olivier, says this community work is aimed to restore the normalcy of the area. We first planted trees and then tore all the houses to the ground. We cut terraces and planted trees. We planted more than 4,000 trees and this will go on at the district level. We are remained with planting the trees and tearing down the remaining walls. It is expected that after the refurbishment, the Ministry of Environment, Rwanda Land Management and Use Authority and Gichumbi District will have a sit down to decide on the way forward. Schools, clinics and water infrastructure are still in place. UNHCR representative in Rwanda, Ahmed Baba Fall, says that the infrastructure needs to be in a safe place for people to use them. We are working with the government to see what they will do with this infrastructure. This infrastructure will benefit, must benefit the population who was uh, housing these refugees. This infrastructure will be restored in the coming months uh, and will be handed over to the authorities and the population of Gihembe. The former Gihembe camp covers an area of more than 40 hectares. About 12,000 refugees have been relocated to Mahama camp in Kirehe district due to the area being a high risk zone. The Bank of Rwanda has provided 30 million Rwandan francs in interest-free loans to select entrepreneurs who provided good project proposals. This is the fifth time the Bank of Kigali has partnered with Ihomoko to provide the interest-free loans. As I showed you in my project proposal, the money will help us to train more youth looking to make a living from growing and selling bamboo. 
we will also be able to expand our plantations and business in general. But most importantly, we want to support other entrepreneurs who learn from us. Our project has to do with art and craft, focusing on the Made in Rwanda theme. We entered the competition with the intent of reducing unemployment among the country's youth, training them in art and craft. The initiative does more than just support the winning projects financially, though that is a key feature of the assistance given. And we have found out through a lot of consultations with our entrepreneurs that access to finance is still something, a big barrier for SMEs to actually develop and grow and scale. We had the great opportunity of having Bank of Kigali come on board to create that in this initiative, Beka Rumuri, five years ago. And since then, 150 entrepreneurs have been supported. We have seen an amazing amount of job creation. Executives at the Bank of Kigali say they are proud to be part of the drive. After participants submit their project proposals, those viewed as being the most beneficial to society are selected. The shortlisting continues, done by judges until only five proposals remain, and those are the projects that Bank of Kigali awards interest-free loans of 5 million Rwandan francs each. This year, because it is our fifth year working with Imomoku, we decided to choose six projects to get the loans of 5 million each. The competition is held annually. That was the Bank of Kigali. Now, Equity Bank has officially launched its leaders program, Rwanda, and will seek to assist some of the best performing students in the country. To start, the bank is providing paid internships to 32 students and will also see that they have no problems transitioning to universities, both in the country and abroad. But Equity Bank has shown us and has given us the perfect epitome that fighting for economic uh, prosperity does not leave behind the social prosperity. It, ha it, is, it is ready to fight for our social prosperity in terms of education and our economic prosperity in terms of our economic uh, in, uh, in internship. So right now, we are a perfect proof that we are ready to be the perfect leaders for Rwanda, the ambassadors of equity and the ambassadors of Rwanda, either in the country or internationally. Thank you. This equity leaders program will help me in many different ways, mainly in economic lives, in, social, in our daily lives, because I will get the internship that will increase my economic, not only by getting money, but also I will gain the skills, mainly how I can behave when I have gotten, I've got the job. And Executives at Equity say this is just the beginning. It is now based on the number of branches a country has. So like now, every branch was giving the best girl and the best uh, uh, boy in the region it operates. As the branches grow, the number of scholars grow. So that is how it will perpetually grow. The program will be maintained forever because now Equity uh, Rwanda has the capacity to provide the jobs to those students. Rwanda's government has commended the initiative. This is something they have been doing in other countries successfully and though we have other development partners in the education sector that help us in various ways, this is the first initiative we have had of this nature and we want our business partners to follow suit so that we can accelerate the development of the education sector in Rwanda and the country's youth. The Equity Leaders Program in Rwanda begins with a budget of 300 million Rwandan francs, money that will go towards supporting the government and the guardians and parents of the students to cover tuition fees and other expenses in university. 
On Saturday, the delegation of 25 Sudanese officials currently on a week-long visit here in Rwanda visited the Kigali Genocide Memorial at Gisozi. Now, the delegation includes cabinet members, parliamentarians, as well as top police and military officials and are currently undertaking discussions on unity and reconciliation at the Rwanda Peace Academy. We, as a delegation from the government of the Republic of South Sudan, uh, we really are, we are appreciative of that and I believe that the experience of the people of Rwanda and the government of Rwanda will be example, will be exemplary and we shall, uh, we shall uh, by all means try to do the same. Of course, South Sudan is one of the areas which is also affected by the war. And uh, even though it, it, it did not amount to a full genocide, but nevertheless, the atrocities that were committed are almost similar with those atrocities committed here in uh, Rwanda. So we shall try our level best to benefit from this experience and use it for transforming our people our community and our government to the best of our ability. So congratulations again to the people and the government of Rwanda and especially His Excellency the President Paul Kagame for his unlimited efforts which he had been exerting all this time. On Saturday, the Rwanda Security Force deployed in Mozambique's northern province of Cabo Delgado introduced community work commonly known in Rwanda as Umuganda in Palma Town in Palma District. The activity was aimed at cleaning the streets of Palma Town and enhancing the culture of working together in transforming their community. The activity was conducted jointly with the population and local authorities as well as the Mozambican national security organs. The community work, Umuganda, initiated by RSF, aimed at not only contributing to cleanliness of the town, but also bridging the gap between the population and leadership at different levels in enhancing stabilization efforts. The community work attracted about 4,000 residents of Palma Town. The activity was attended by the key leaders of the district, including Mr. Martins Egidis Hamate, Director of Infrastructure in Palma District and local government representatives. The cleaning activities covered main road or feeder roads, streets, roadside water canals along three kilometer squared stretch of Palma Town. Mr. Martins Egidis Nhamate, who spoke on behalf of the government of Mozambique, commended the Rwanda Security Force for their support and contribution to the peace and security in Mozambique and also encouraged the local population or leaders to continue participating in community work in order to rebuild and protect infrastructure in the district. Well, there you have it. On behalf of the entire news production team, thank you so much for your company. I'm Jane Mutoni. Bye for now.